Hello world, Noah here, and welcome to the very first lecture of CS University. In this lecture, I'm going to try to motivate, you know, all of these future lectures that I'm going to be putting up over the next couple of months by answering two fairly simple questions, why programming and why Python. So the first question, why programming? Well, if you're watching this uh, video series, there's a decent chance that you already have your own answer to this question, and that's perfectly fine. There are lots of different valid answers to this question, and whatever motivation you have for getting into it is great, and you should absolutely stick with it. But there may be some people who are just sort of checking it out to see, you know, what's going on. Uh, they're not sure if they want to stick around. They're not sure maybe what the big deal is. You know, what's the point in learning how to program? It's kind of complicated and all that. So for them, I'd like to provide a couple of uh, reasons that I could think of as to why programming is, uh, you know, is a worthwhile thing to learn. So first thing on this list is definitely the biggest one for me, and it's the inevitable fact that code is everywhere. If you think about all of the different electronic devices that you interact with every single day, they all have some amount of code in them somewhere. You could think about your phone, your tablet, your laptop, your desktop, your smartwatch, your television, even small things like the clock radio next to your bed, you know, the navigation system in your car, and you could even get more specific. You know, you have your phone, but how about, you know, all the different apps that you have on it? Or you have your laptop, how about all of the different websites that you can visit on it? All of these things use code you know, in different capacities. So perhaps something small like a parking meter uh, could use a hardware language like Verilog or something low level like assembly or machine code. Or you could go the other end and think about a website that uses a high level language like JavaScript, for example. Um, but the common thread is that all of these things are built with code and so code is everywhere. And if you can learn code, you can come to you can learn how to code, you can learn how to program, you can come to appreciate, you know, all of these things that are all around us even more. Which leads into the next point, that learning how to code can give you a better understanding of technology. Uh, you can sort of get an idea of how complex everything is, you know, all around us, all of these, you know, these websites and these apps and these features that we take for granted. You can sort of just think, you know, wow, if I had to program that myself, it would be you know, super complicated, or I don't even know how I would start, you know, things like that. You can, you can sort of get an idea of just how impressive, you know, everything, everything sort of is. And then of course, once you get even better at programming, you can start to think, you know, how could I implement this feature? You see some cool app or some cool website or something, and you say, you know, how could I build this myself or maybe build a simpler version or a modified version to suit my needs better? Or you see some sort of a piece of hardware and you say, how could I simulate this to, you know, sort of get an idea of how it works. Next idea that I'd put out there is troubleshooting. So, you know, even if you're not going to be doing a ton of programming, you probably use quite a lot of software and websites and, you know, things that run on code, right? And they don't always work, you know, as they're supposed to. And sometimes they can crash or they can behave unexpectedly. And you know, knowing how to code can possibly give you some sort of an idea, some sort of an insight into what exactly is going wrong. Because maybe the erroneous behavior that you see is, you know, some behavior that you've seen in your own code. Or you could imagine, oh, this looks like an off by one error, or oh, there's a null pointer exception, I know what that means. You know, different things like that. That's not to say that you could, you know, fix every problem that you come to find, um, but you can give you some sort of an idea of what's going on. And perhaps, you know, it could even help you solve a problem if you realize that, oh, there's a file missing or, oh, this setting is incorrect or whatever. Perhaps it could give you some sort of an idea. But then, of course, there are some people who want to pick up programming because they have an idea for the next big thing, that next million dollar app that they just need to program or they're looking for a lucrative career option and, you know, programming is, is a great one because there's high demand right now and relatively low supply. And to those people, I'd say that's good motivation to learn how to program, but just don't lose sight of it because programming is challenging. It takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of work and it's not easy. 
Um, and if you decide that you want to start programming for the express purpose of being able to build what you believe to be a million dollar app, uh, you don't want to get discouraged along the way and say, oh, this is too hard or, oh, it's not worth it or anything like that. Um, because then it's, you know, too easy to give up. I'd highly recommend that if you're going to, you know, put some serious time into learning how to program, you should do it because you want to do it because you want to learn and you want to get better. Not just because you're trying to make some money or you're trying to, to, you know, get to the end goal, um, but to each their own. And I'm absolutely not, you know, knocking those people or saying that they shouldn't watch these videos because, uh, you'll still learn programming, you know, if you put the effort in, right. Um, so that should be a good enough motivation, you know, for why programming. And I'm sure, you know, most of these viewers, most of you guys already have an idea for yourself. So how about why Python? Why am I using Python as my, you know, starting language, the first language, um, that I'm, that I'm teaching. And so that's basically to me, two different questions. Why is Python a good first language for a beginner to learn? And why is Python a good language to know? you know, in general, beyond just learning Python so you can learn how to code, you know, why is Python actually useful? And so let's answer the first question first. Why is Python a good first language? Um, well, the first and easiest answer is, you know, my university uses it and I'm, you know, modeling these lectures after the ones that are given at my university. And so since they're using Python, I'm going to use Python as well. Uh, but that's obviously sort of the cop-out answer. It doesn't really answer the question. I will say that I completely agree with my university's, you know, and the department's decision to use Python. And so to really answer the question as to why, uh, it's two big things for me. The first is that Python is a very terse language, which means, um, that you can do a lot. You can, you can, uh, you know, have a lot of functionality with very little code. Um, so there's a lot of things that you can do in Python uh, where if I were teaching Java as the first language, it would take a lot of code. It would take multiple lines of code to do something. It might be very confusing. Whereas in Python, you can do it in one line and, and it's very easy and all that. So basically Python lets you do a lot with a little bit of code, um, you know, which is really good for beginner stuff because, you know, when you're learning a concept, you want to learn the concept. You don't want to focus so much on the code, or I guess really you want the code to work um, so that you can demonstrate the concept. And I think that Python does a great idea, a great job of, um, you know, staying out of the way and just making stuff work, you know, relatively easily. And I'd say Python is also very easy to understand. If you look at, you know, some Python code, you know, some code that we'll end up writing in later videos, or even if you go on the internet and look, in general, you can look at some Python code and figure out what it's doing fairly easily. Uh, Python code is also pretty similar to pseudocode, which is basically just, you know, general code that doesn't, it's not code that's written in a specific language. It's just code that's meant to illustrate an algorithm. Um, pseudocode generally looks a lot like English and it focuses more on, you know, the steps of the algorithm as opposed to the actual code that will make it run on a computer. And Python, I'd say, ends up looking a lot like pseudocode. It's very easy to understand. Um, it's easy to write. And so I just think for these reasons, you know, Python is a great language to begin with. It, it lets you do a lot with a little bit of code. It's easy to understand. Um, and these are things that you want in a language where you're really focusing more on the concepts than you are on the code. I mean, of course you're learning the code, but you got to understand, you know, what the code's doing and how the code works. Right. But Python is not just a first language. I want to make that very clear. Python is a very powerful language um, that's used in a lot of different places. And so that brings us to the, the next question, which is why is Python a good language to know in general? Well, here's a couple of ideas that I have, and these are just a couple of ideas. Python is used in a lot of different applications for a lot of different reasons, but here are just a few. Uh, so first of all, Python is great for automating simple tasks. So one example I can give you is I had a coworker uh, one time who wanted some help. Basically, they had this online form and they had a spreadsheet and they wanted to, you know, you know, for every line in the spreadsheet, they wanted to fill out and submit the online form one time but the spreadsheet had, you know, a lot of different entries in it and it was really annoying to have to copy and paste over and over and over and over again. So I actually wrote them 
a pretty simple Python script that would read, you know, it would read the spreadsheet and for each line in the spreadsheet, it would fill up, fill out and submit the form. And basically it just automated away this, this mundane task. And so that's just one example, but there are tons of different examples of, you know, little ways that you can use Python or any other language, but Python's a great one, you know, to sort of automate uh, these tasks that you have to do that are kind of annoying, kind of manual labor. And so, you know, if you're, if you're looking at this maybe more to get something out of it as opposed to just learning how to code, you know, maybe you'll be able to write yourself some nice, you know, some simple uh, scripts that will help you out. Beyond that, Python is also heavily used in the science and data science fields. Um, so there's libraries like NumPy and SymPy and Matplotlib that will allow you to aggregate and understand data and generate charts and graphs and all of that good stuff. Um, it's used a lot. It's used a lot, you know, in relation to data and and uh, and you know, visualizing it and, and things like that. So it's it's heavily used in the science field. It's also used for machine learning. So the TensorFlow library, which you may have heard of, is written in Python. Um, and so if you want to use TensorFlow, you'd actually write some Python code to uh, to interface with the TensorFlow module. And so, you know, that's one good reason for, for, uh, for Python is machine learning because TensorFlow is pretty popular. And then another example, and one that I have a lot of experience with, is backend web development. So if you're working on a web backend, you know, it's something that will serve your, your front-end content, maybe it'll have a database attached to it, you know, other stuff like that. Uh, Python's a great choice. There are uh, some modules, there's Django and Flask among others, um, you know, that are, that are fantastic for web backends. I think I actually do have some videos on this channel related to Django. So perhaps in the future, you could, you could check those out and learn how to do that. Um, and so just to, just to, you know, quickly, to quickly summarize and to write this down, we have, you know, TensorFlow is the machine learning library. And then Django and Flask are the web backends, and you know we mentioned all of those other things as well. So those are good things to check out in the future once you're you know more comfortable with the language. And then the last point that I have here is that once you know one language, you can easily learn others, uh, because the hard part about learning your first language is understanding all of the concepts. Uh, but once you know what an if statement is and a for loop and a function and a class and, and all of those things, then you can go to another language and all you have to learn is how do I express these concepts in this other syntax. You don't have to relearn what an if statement is because you already understand you know, that concept. And so the idea is I'm going to be heavily focusing on the concepts you know, in all of these tutorials, just like I have been on all the tutorials on my channel, because the concepts, they're the hard part and they're the interesting part, um, because whichever language you use is just a different syntax. It's a different way of sort of demonstrating the same idea. But once you know one language, you can easily pick up more. And I'd say I probably know, I don't know, five to 10 languages now, which is not as impressive as it sounds because Again, once you know one, you can easily learn others. And so with that said, it's almost not a huge deal which language you start with. Um, you know, if you want to eventually get into app development, you'll probably want to learn Java or Kotlin or Swift for iOS. Um, but you don't have to start there. If you start with Python, you can easily pick those languages up. So I think that sort of gives enough of an idea um, you know, as far as why programming and why Python, um, you know, hopefully you are nice and excited for all of the, uh, all of the content that we're going to be covering. There's a lot of cool things to go over. And by the end of this series, or at least this part of the series, um, you will be proficient in Python programming. So that's pretty exciting. In the lab component for this lecture, uh, or for this lesson, I'm going to be installing Python and making sure we have everything set up. And then in the next lesson, we're going to actually start writing a little bit of code. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.